jingle you just heard is by Stringless Music Solutions. If you are interested in learning how to play the guitar, including bass and ukulele, do contact Stringless Music Solutions. Mention the promo code EXPOSE to get $15 off your lesson fees. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us this, this episode of uh, Exposed Photography with Alan. Hey, Alan, how are you today? Hey, Ricky. Can you hear me okay? Yep, hear you well. Good, good. Thank you. All good. Home, like everybody, I guess. Yeah, it's been a long while, you know, staying Thanks at home. Thanks for having and, me tonight, yeah. Yeah, sure, you know, we're happy to have you back again and this time around, a different topic. And uh, I, I believe everybody who, who is thinking of having to create their own book will learn something tonight from you. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Sure, sure. Let us uh, get it going, man. Excellent. So do you want to get started or do you want to wait a few mi minutes? Uh, yeah, sure. You know, just yeah, whatever. Put, put it going. Wow. You have a good collection of uh, books. Uh, no, actually, yeah, exactly. This is, um, this is something I started uh, a little while ago. I started buying uh, a lot of uh, photography books, yeah. And yep. if you look at the uh, the cover, I think you can read some of the cover. It's very eclectic, yeah. Yep. You got uh, street photography, you got landscape photography, you got some uh, are really uh, some a little bit in nature. Some stuff is uh, from Eastern Europe. Sometimes it's from the U.S. You got a whole range. Some are well-known photographers. Some are less known. Uh, photographers uh, you got the classics you got the fashion guys you got the street photographers as well so very uh, uh interesting and this is for me really a good uh, a good source of uh, inspiration as uh, I, I like to see see the the the, the prints on uh, on uh, the the photographs uh, printing and uh, i think uh, while the amazing advantage of digital and being able to showcase like we do now things yep. uh, uh, online I think it's great from time to time to chill and just to uh, open a book and uh, have a look at it. I'm not, I'm not a big reader. <laughs> I'm more so, visual guy. So, so yeah. when, when, when did you buy your first uh, photography book? Wow. Gee, I cannot, probably uh, <laughs> was, was, yeah, not, uh, was probably a while, while back. Actually I've, I've accelerated since I am in, uh, in Singapore in the last, uh, the last 10 years, I must, uh, I must admit, but I probably started in uh, in Prague in uh, in 2000, uh, 2000, uh, 2002. Uh, okay. This is when I started buying wow. uh, buying books, and where I started p really picking up uh, a, a bit more street photography, uh, as I had the opportunity to actually do that there quite uh, quite a lot. So you can see some some classics, but also uh, obviously some. Uh, so very clear. so I like to be inspired by different different style. Mm -hmm. uh, I would not say I have a, a specific uh, style. I'm not a big landscape photographer, and you'll see very few landscape actually books there. Uh, and this is a little bit the uh, the reason for the book uh, silhouette is that I always like to see uh, to see people in the in the in the in their surrounding in the real life. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I really have amazing admiration for people who do only landscape because it requires a lot of patience. You have to write for for the right lights and all the rest and uh, and uh, but uh, it's not uh, it's not really my thing i really i really like more the spontaneous kind of uh, unpredictable kind of uh, event that happens on the on the streets or when you travel yeah. so the feeling of looking at photos uh, from a physical book beats the experience of looking them through uh, a laptop or ipad or things like that right yes i th i think it does and the, and it does because for two, two reasons, it's physical, you can touch and feel. And usually they are high quality books. Yeah, they're well, well printed. So you can see that also the photographer and the designers put a lot of effort to the, to the presentation, the layout. So it's not just random kind of, kind of, kind of uh, uh, pictures that you would look at on the, on the gallery, on the internet of the, of the photographer. So, and usually there is a theme, either it's a person or a place or, or uh, uh, an event, yeah. And I think that makes it really, really interesting. And what you see is really, is true. What is interesting is to have several books, yeah? Yep. Of Ricky, of the same photographer. So you can see the style a little bit. And it's true, 
a lot of these very well-known uh, masters have a style whether you like it or not they have a style yeah yep. and they are all different they have a style in the way they like to print and a lot of these guys were not in born in, even in the we're not even doing the pictures in digital age so everything was done in the dark room so yep. there is a, a style in black and white and you can see it consistently through their books through their photographs depending on independent of the subject, I would say. And that makes it really very interesting. Yeah. So, Alan, I know you travel quite a bit you know, for, for work and leisure and things like that. Do you make an effort to visit a bookstore to, to look at the books available and, and sometimes buys it if you, if you see something that caught your eyes? I don't, yeah, I would say uh, I like to be surprised. Yeah? So I do not make an effort. I'll be, I'll be very frank with you to look for mm-hmm. books. Especially, no, when I go to Paris, I go to, there are a few libraries where they have photo, for, uh, photo stores, yeah, where you can find stuff and you can browse and, and look. So I, I, I do that. Okay. Uh, and other cities, I like to be surprised, yeah. So sometimes I bump into an exhibition, then the, the book is for sale, so I just buy it. Or it's an exhibition of a certain photographer, the book is not available, but then I look online later and I buy it, yeah. But usually I buy on uh, I buy over the internet and get it delivered very seldomly in uh, in, in stores. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because sometimes certain books are too big and thick, and it's too heavy to bring it around, especially when you are traveling. Yeah. So some deli- are really are very heavy. They are easily three four kilos. Yeah. You can see yes. the book, Bible Top or Buba or the Marshallier who is a fashion photographer. Yeah, I have some books by uh, from Magnum. It's like uh, three inches yeah. thick, you know. So exactly. when, when it, it get delivered to my house, it's like my wife was thinking, "What what kind of book are you? Did you buy offline?" You know. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's the, I get the same comment at home. Is that how many more books that are you gonna buy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, just yeah, like filling true. up the filling up the the our our how do you call it? our shelves? Yeah. Yes, correct. So it's good. Yeah, yeah. 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 You can see here what I do as well. You can see the previous picture, yeah? If you can go oh, back, okay. yeah? Yeah. So you see, I have a little acrylic stand. I got oh, yes. From Tash. Yeah, so uh, from time to time, I pick a book and I just open it, lay flat and uh, and some pictures so people can browse or I can browse, so it's good, yeah? So it shows nice. some of the, yeah. the artists, yeah? Yeah. It's cool. All right. So let's talk so about let's your talk book. Little, yeah. So interestingly, I uh, as I said, I like, I like to see, it's true, I don't have a printer myself. I don't print uh, uh, pictures. Maybe I should. I do have quite a few pictures uh, hanging on the wall, most from me and I bought a, from, some, from some, some photographers as well. But I like to do on certain occasion, uh, so I did the one for my uh, elder son, Victor, when he turned 10 years old, uh, a, a, a book about his first 10 years. Um, it was about 44, 46 pictures. And then um, here, when I was here, so I moved to Singapore in 2010, yeah? So, so I did it in 2011, in 2010 here. Uh, and then I did also for, um, in 2015, I thought of, of, uh, of publishing the, uh, some of the best pictures I had made in, in the year 2015. Uh, mm-hmm. Interestingly here, the source, Ricky, was uh, Instagram. Oh, okay. But, so actually, I took the most liked or the most okay. viewed picture I can remember on Instagram because I thought if I publish on Instagram, I like them. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I would not. It makes sense. So I yeah. Said, how, how, how to pick them? So I, I chose the, the best pictures. And then, at the, um, and then in 2018, I thought, I mean, it would be good to go, do a little bit to, to show a little bit a broader range of pictures. And uh, it's a very, it's a very big book. It's about 422 pages. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's wow. basically all the, all the, the, the pictures I really like that I've taken uh, from the beginning until 20, until 2017. That's why it's called until the end of 2017. But it was really a interesting process to curate and select the pictures. Now, I, I mean, it's, it's a good view of the kind of work I've done, I've been doing and the, the kind of pictures I've been taking. But I feel it's like uh, it's it's a it's a it's a nice book, but it's like almost too many pictures. So and you see, this is what. I, so I'm, maybe I show you some of the. Uh, yeah, if you go, sure. if you want to go to the. So this is the um, the book I did for uh, for for Victor. 
So it was a bit of a personal book. And I've used consistently blurb here. So some of the pictures I've taken, yeah. That was for his 10th birthday. Oh. That's kind of the, the first book. So some, some quite personal pictures, some family and stuff, yeah. So wow, different, yeah. different type of pictures, yeah. Cool, so, very cool. So did it with, uh, with, uh, with blur. And then a bit more, bit more uh, my picture. So this is a picture I, I took in, in London, actually, in, uh, in 20, I think 2015, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's funny because it was uh, from the uh, double-decker bus, yeah. Uh, there was these guys crossing the road and reminding me, I don't know if you know the, the Beatles album, Abbey yeah. Road, where yep. you can see the guys, four guys crossing the street. Yes, before. correct, yeah. So I thought, geez, <laughs> here are Iconic five, photos. <laughs> so I thought, okay, I'm going to have my, my, my Beatles moment. Yeah, so I took some, some pictures. And then I, I took some of the pictures you see in the book silhouettes as well. So, yeah, small, small format, but also, uh, also very nice. Some friends, but also some, some traveling, different places. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's square so book, so I think it's easy to, to, square to book, bring around. Yeah. yeah, and I'll show a little bit later how it was made. Uh, because I, I did exactly the same process. That's very easy if you have already uh, catalog your picture. And the, this is the biggie, yeah? This yeah. Uh, also square. Wow. Um, and I did, uh, it's about 400 pages here. Yeah. And this is basically all the uh, kind of, a lot of the pictures I've taken over, over the years in South Asia, in Europe, in Hong Kong, in Spain, yeah? Different, different, different kind, yeah. So a little bit, do you, do, do you still have can... any of uh, the books that are still in stock with you? No, I don't have stock. <laughs> Those are my <laughs> limited editions. Any, anytime. I can, if you order, I'm happy to sign it so I can order it for you. That's cool. And uh, we can talk about it. So those are the, the, so very interesting. And I think the most interesting part of the process, because I'm not a printer, is the selection of the pictures. And that, mm -hmm. that can bring me to the, to the book, uh, then uh, the, the book I just did, yeah. Okay, let me bring back the screen. Yep. Excellent. So we, let's talk about your latest book. So the latest book here, yeah, I, just, I just got it published about uh, uh, in May actually, just, just like last month. And uh, this time I wanted to do something a bit, a bit larger format, yeah? To, to, because I believe pictures, if you look at all the books I have, most of them, unless they are kind of a, like an introduction to a photographer, usually pictures, if they're good, I mean, deserve really to be of good, of good size. That's, that's, that's my personal view. So here it's large, 30 by 30, but actually some of the pictures are double-sided uh, mm -hmm. in the full uh, using the thing. So it actually is almost like 45 by, by, by 30, yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the big challenge was, I had initially selected 300 photographs, so I was aiming for a very big book. So I thought, how I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it down to 23. So my wife, some friends as well, look at it and uh, kind of help me narrow it down to 23 photographs. So actually, it's 21 because 22 is the front and 23 is the is the back uh, is the back okay. cover. So very very few pictures, and. Um, so the, the idea was to, to showcase a little bit the, the work I've been doing, which is the street photography work, and a little bit of, a, of travel as well, and really showing people in their element, yeah? And usually you see why I call it silhouette, because a lot of, a lot of the pictures are backlit. So usually the, the, the characters stand out in front of the, uh, of the scenery or the, the streets and stuff like that, like on these pictures in, the, in Wan Chai in, in Hong Kong in the, in the mid-90s, yeah? Yep. So this this is was done, uh, and I'll show it on the next slide, on with Adobe, Adobe Lightroom, who's been my uh, no. Let's go back here, yeah, uh, Ricky. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and Blurb plugin. Blurb is the uh, is the uh, the printing company I'm using. I'd online services. Yeah. It's it's all online. Yeah. These days, yeah. it's an American company who have uh, actually uh, they have also facilities in uh, in Europe. If I'm not wrong, in uh, in Holland. Uh, but not in Asia, not yet. Yeah. So maybe an opportunity, yeah, Ricky. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, interesting is that is a really a mix. What you see in the book, like this picture, is a scan from a slide. Mm, uh, so right. I was shooting slide, uh, slide and film until uh, 
probably uh, I started in 20 in 1990 with uh, an SLR and you can see I took a, I found a picture on Wikipedia of, uh, of uh, <laughs> uh, uh, EOS 650 that was my wow. first camera yeah do you uh, used to have it uh, actually you know I regret because I sold it yeah yeah I, I believe we yeah, all have this regret moment that we should after a few years later that we should have kept it you know if you know Yes, really, uh, I don't know. So I have a, a Neo S1 now, which I bought a little bit later, which I still have, but I still, okay. I still like that one. Actually, some of the pictures I took, uh, I really, and really people are so obsessed by gear and technology, that yes. actually if you look at some of these pictures were not digital, they were taken with, with slide or film, I can't remember. And mm -hmm. actually it's really more about the framing, the light and everything else, the rest. Is important, but I would say it's secondary, yeah, if, as long as you feel good. And then yeah. I started digital very late, yeah, because I think the first digital camera came in 96 or 97, I think the first one, yeah, kind yeah. of, yeah, few megapixels. So I started with uh, the first, uh, uh, I would say, consumer grade uh, Canon uh, DSLR was called the uh, the Rebel or the 350D or something like this, yeah. Yeah, I think Rebel is the, the, the US branding for the right canon right. yeah and what was very smart from canon i think is they didn't change the mount so all the lenses i had i was using with my previous camera my slr and non-digital i could fit them on the on the camera yeah that's the good thing right because you you don't want to be you know not able to use those lenses when you move to digital right right Exactly. Yes. So the, I think Canon has been uh, quite consistent from that point of view. Yeah. I think now I abandoned them yeah, in uh, about four years ago. But uh, <laughs> I think they 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 have uh, they've been very good at uh, at uh, keeping one mount for many 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 years, yeah, which was good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So let me so, just briefly maybe show a little. Yeah. So we will run through the process of how Alan created the book because I think this is something that all of us. Uh, wants to do, but sometimes don't know how to do it. Mm. So let's hear from Alan. So, so, yeah, so, so here what you see is the uh, interface of, uh, of Lightroom. And, um, and so the first thing you need, so obviously I've been using it for many, many years. So all my, cat, all my pictures in JPEG or RAW format, mostly RAW format, are stored in Lightroom, are cataloged in Lightroom. And... Uh, saved on the on external external hard drive yeah and you can see on the left side here of the screen you can see all the collections you see here i have a collection called silhouette which is the book actually and in the in you have different modules the library is to browse develop is to change and adapt the, the uh, your pictures modify them map if you have taken with gps coordinate you're able to see on the map where you've taken the pictures. So if you've taken your phone, yep. for example, with a smartphone easily. And book, this is interesting because Adobe partnered with Blurb, which is the printing company, and they've oh, made available, okay. yeah, they've partnered with Blurb. They've made available actually a plugin and the different type of books that they are. So you see on the right side here, you can see large square. You can yep. choose the paper style and all the rest. And then it presents you with a, 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 a layout. And then obviously at the bottom here, you see the pictures on the back, on the bottom. Yep. One new thing you need to do is drag the pictures. And then obviously you need to adjust, you need to type some text and all the rest. So it's basically very good. And then once you're done, the only thing you need to do is on the right bottom corner, you see send book to blurb. Yep. You just press, you enter your credentials. And, and a, a credit sudden, card number. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, no, not yet. Not yet, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> so you actually upload your, your, your book. And the nice thing about it, you don't need to export your file. It will mm -hmm. be at the right resolution. Otherwise, you will have even warning if the resolution is not enough. So it makes it very, very, I would say, Simple. straightforward. Yep. And what you see is really what you get. So you see, this is the layout of the books. It doesn't have a lot of pages here. So I could even show it on one screen. So this is basically the pictures of the book that uh, gets printed. So you can see the cover and the back. And then there's a, a, always the same. Then you have a, a, a single picture. And then, then you can, and then you can play with the layout. So if you want to have three pictures, three, uh, 
three photographs per page, four photographs. You can really do whatever you want here. Yeah? Uh, if you want to have a spread like I have on some pictures, uh, like on page uh, six and seven, you can, you can do that, yeah? So a lot of flexibility. If you want to add text, no text, that's really your call. If you want to add more pages, like I did on these other books, like 400 pages, you just add simply pages. Of course, the price goes up, yeah. And then yeah. when you're done, you just send it. And then, you're, then once you send it, then you, you brought onto the blurb interface. And from there, uh, Ricky, this is where you need to put your credit card number. Yeah. <laughs> to now, just just, just a disclaimer to all the viewers, we are not sponsored by blurb. You know, it's yeah, exactly, just a service exactly. that Alan is using. Neither Adobe. Yeah. Neither, Adobe. neither Adobe. yeah, correct. Yeah, we're not sponsored by all these companies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So another thing as well in Adobe is you see on the bottom left, you have export book to, uh, to PDF. Actually, yeah. you can generate a PDF version of the book, yeah? Wow, wow. You can share with friends. So, so I would say it's my workhouse, workhorse for, for photography, Lightroom. And frankly, I do everything in there. And you can see uh, it's very well, uh, it's very even web. And we can talk about it. I even update my website directly uh, from, uh, from here. So, but obviously the only conditions I would say is to have your, your pictures catalog in, uh, in Lightroom. Yeah? They can be in different places, but they need to be a catalog in a single place. Yeah. Well, it's, it's very simple process. Just looking at what you just explained. I was always thinking that, you know, you have to click a lot of buttons, you know, and, to, and then it get very confusing before you are sent to the printer. But this is really simple. And I believe it, viewers who are tuning right now, they probably understand. And maybe a few of them will start printing their own books soon. No, I really encourage you to, yeah. to have a look at it. Um, obviously, you need to install the plugin. Just uh, you can always uh, email me if you're interested. I can give you some, uh, something. You need to install the plugin, right? Obviously, yep. in, in Lightroom, but it's, it's, a, it's a really a few minutes, a uh, few minutes. And then uh, off you go, off you go. And then the beautiful thing is that you can choose your, the size of your book. And basically, mm -hmm. all the different formats that Blurb provides, they are, they are available on this, uh, this thing. Cool. So really uh, highly recommended because it's, for me, uh, the process of using a separate tool, uh, then exporting the pictures, and learning something different, different interface is really uh, too steep. And uh, for me, uh, for me, it's uh, a lot of advantages of having something integrated. Yeah. Yeah, it's good because what you are seeing right now is one page. Exactly. Where you have all the features oh. in it. It's exactly. not easy. Yeah. For for other uh, printing services, but with this, it's so easy. You know, once you're done with your layout with the wordings. Click, click, pay, done. Wow, amazing. Yeah. So we will talk about some of the photos that uh, is part of this book, you know? Yeah. So, uh, so I'm going to have, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a couple of weeks, thanks to my friend Irena, uh, in, in, in Czech Republic, uh, uh, an exhibition of some, uh, some photographs from, from the book, which I, I'd like to, uh, to present here. So uh, of some... Uh, nine photographs out of 20, uh, 23 that I've figured. So this is a very uh, uh, interesting one I have also in my living room. This is uh, at Lake Ballad in Australia. And uh, this was a, a piece of, uh, there are statues like this in this lake. So you need to understand this lake is about seven hours, eight hours um, east of Perth. So it's very far away in the middle okay. of nowhere. Wow. So this is a lake that gets filled when, 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 the, 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 when it rains. And uh, the artist, I'm sorry, I forgot his name now. Uh, it's, really, it's really just slipped my mind. Uh, has actually embedded these statues. I think there are 40 or 50 statues. It was wow, commissioned by the Perth Art Festival around the whole lake. So you arrive there and you just walk around and you see these, uh, these statues. So here I was a little bit fortunate because it rained. So there's a bit of water and reflection. So I took these statues. So don't be mistaken, the statues are very small. They look big, but they are very small because here I was quite low. I was kneeling oh, down. Oh, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great perspective. So, huh? Yeah, don't, don't be fooled, yeah? If you see the statue in real life, they are not two meter high. They are more like uh, maybe uh, a meter. 1.5, yeah, 20. okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, but very interesting. So they are kind of sealed 
on the ground and they are all over the place. I mean, you can see in the distance, there are some, some, some speck like this and those are statues. So they are all over this lake here. Ma amazing. And it's really in the middle of nowhere. So I was fortunate to go there last year with the family. We took a trip and, uh, and we drove there to Lake Balad, which is in the middle of nowhere. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, so it was a very interesting place. Wow, very cool. Uh, this, is, uh, this is from Hong Kong in uh, December 2017. I was there with the, the family and my parents as well. And this is in, uh, in Hong Kong. And I would say this is a classical almost picture of Hong Kong with uh, yes. the grandma pushing her cart. <laughs> yes. You don't see those, Ricky, too much in Hong Kong, a little bit in Singapore, yeah? No, you don't because the, the, the push cart that they use is very unique to Hong Kong. When you look at that, the, the, the cart that they use, you know, oh, this oh. is Hong Kong. Yeah. Nice. In Singapore, you get those cart that is just off the shelf. So the wheels yeah. are smaller, you know, it looks very modern. But in Hong Kong, these are cus lightly custom built by the hardware shops. Yeah. yeah. And this is, a, I think, a good illustration of the kind of photography I really like. Yeah, a lot of mm -hmm. contrast, shadow and light. But always, as you see, yeah, some, uh, some people going about their daily life. And uh, I mean, Hong Kong is a very hard place here to, uh, to live, very costly. So you need to, uh, to constantly uh, work. Otherwise, it's, it's very hard to make both ends uh, yeah. uh, meet. It's competitive. Uh, very it's ultra competitive. So here's yeah. a good uh, lucky. So this is what I like in photography is l the luck. Yeah? So you see, yes. I'm, I'm not planning. I'm not staging. So you gotta be alert. You gotta be looking for uh, for for things. So that lady was just passing by. I think I took maybe four or five frames, and that's the one that. And of course, it was color, it was digital, but I, I converted into uh, into black and white because I think it looks uh, it looks more striking with the, the curtains closed here behind you. Yeah, the thing with Hong Kong street photography, you know, people are too busy to think, you know, to board, uh, think what are you doing or who you are. Because they're always constantly moving very fast. You should be the one looking out for them because they, the way it's they true. push the car is like an F1 car. You know, they just go, you know, if you, you, better, not there, get, you <laughs> better not be in the way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's true in Hong Kong, actually, it's a dream. I mean, for me, uh, for, for street photography, because people really don't, they just go on with their whatever yeah. happens to you whether you're a photographer or not doesn't matter right. just people just carry on and do their their thing and time they is don't precious. mind yeah and they don't mind you taking the pictures they see you of course and they just uh, who cares yeah let's go let's go on yeah yeah i don't think there are many other places so this is a, a an interesting picture this is was taken in uh, in paris between two jobs in september 2016 this is actually um uh, near nearby my friends called Les Friches, the I forgot the name. It's a place, was a kind of a place that was aimed for reconstruction. And in the in the summer and the autumn, some people took it over and kind of a transformed it into kind of a bit of an arty place where people could go and uh, and mingle and have some some drinks and stuff in the. Uh, so th that guy, <laughs> obviously well built, <laughs> was bringing was restocking with. Uh, with beer, so I, I took a few a few shots. I thought it was interesting with the church behind. So this is the basically the place, and you see it's very um, it's very basic. There are a few uh, few places where you can sit. Uh, it's wooden chips on the on the ground, uh, but it's very nice nice place. It, it's not it's not there anymore. I think it's been transformed into a construction or a park. Okay. No, but it was a very uh, very pleasant place. So a lot of people came after work to chill or just to relax have a, a bite or have a drink, uh, have, a, have a, whatever they need to do. And uh, so that, that guy was just uh, simply restocking. I thought it was uh, an interesting shot. So I just yeah, cool. yeah. framed the guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, in back Kong. in the uh, back. Yeah, Ricky. Yeah. This is in Hong Kong, Kowloon, right? Yeah. Yeah, Kowloon. Yeah. So for me, typical Hong Kong again, kind of uh, yes. Photograph, yeah, I call it the, the shadow people because I think that day I was a little bit lucky. There was quite a good alignment of the, of the sun in this. This is an alley between two buildings in, uh, in Kowloon near the, near the Star Ferry, actually. And, uh, and there were a lot of people going back and forth. So maybe I have maybe 10 or 15 frames, but actually that's the one that really comes uh, quite nice in terms of uh, the different uh, shapes and forms. So 
interesting again as you say ricky people don't mind yeah just go yeah, about their life don't cross, you don't stop them for the picture or tell them to yes correct that's because what i feel in hong happen. kong you know just have to take care of yourself don't block anybody's way and just continue taking a photo because everybody is busy because time is money and it's very stressful for them to, to even stop to talk to you just go 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 you know maybe in singapore people might just stop and ask you hey, oh, can i know what you are doing and things like that but no, certainly not in hong kong so in yeah an interesting uh, an interesting view of uh, hong kong i think quite typical of uh, of hong kong yeah and uh, the the uh, lots of skyscrapers so i think it makes a uh, very interesting for uh, for shadows and uh, and uh, and interesting uh, contracts and light again here strong people uh, silhouette against uh, uh, a light background the kind of stuff i, I really like uh, yeah i i do find in hong kong that uh, you know if you go to places near to the that 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 the 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 harbor you know in both kowloon or hong kong side during the sunset because they have so many buildings around pockets of lights goes through uh to all these corners of the buildings so sometimes you get very interesting perspective where you can take photograph of the mm -hmm. strong uh, sunlight that's uh, you know coming through those uh, buildings and people walking around yeah so this is what i like in in uh, in, uh, in photography yeah you just go yes. around you walk around with your camera again I knew the sun was was going down, but I was not planning on taking your pictures in that alley. So I was just walking by, and I saw these alignments. So I took the pictures here. Yeah. So again, some 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 people have a different sign. Some guys know it's a good spot. They would go consistently there and wait mm -hmm. for the moment. Uh, I don't I don't like it. Uh, I prefer to be uh, to be surprised. And uh, sometimes I'm lucky. Sometimes I'm less lucky. Yeah. So this is also another, I mean, lucky, not lucky because these guys were, it was in, uh, in India, yeah, in Udaipur. We took a, a two, two and a half weeks uh, road trip with the, the family in Rajasthan. Like, and one of the, um, the stop we had in, uh, in, uh, in Udaipur. And uh, Udaipur is an interesting, uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful place. And here you had, uh, as you would see in many places around the world, you would have ki kids playing in the water, taking advantage to cool off. And here they were simply jumping off the, uh, you see the, the wall here into the, into the water. So pretty standard scene. You've seen that in many places of the world, but I thought the alignment of the white wall, the contrast of the guy, his legs spread and the, and yeah. the, and the surrounding was, uh, was, uh, was interesting. Again, a color picture uh, that I, I transformed in, uh, in black and white because I think helps you focus more on the uh, on the silhouette on on the on, on the person uh and these kids didn't mind they didn't see me yeah they don't they, 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 yeah, yeah they're busy so with their play, play yeah yeah and this one i would say this is probably one of the pictures i really like the most and probably something you can't you can't repeat if you wanted to to do it again i don't think you would do it but what's interesting was uh in august 99 in uh, i was on a project in zurich with my wife would go to zermatt for the first time and it was raining 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 and uh, in the morning that day in the in the places where we stay the the uh, the guy said you know there is a very strong wind and, uh, and a high pressure coming coming through europe it might be clear tomorrow morning so i was like okay let's see what happened <laughs> and at five in the morning i woke up and then there was the the Matterhorn that you see here, the 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 majestic mountain, iconic mountain, was really yeah. golden. So I said, let's get up. So we took the first cable car up the mountain, and then we walk up the mountain, and then we went down. But as we went down, since it rained a lot, there was a lot of humidity, so the the fog was going up. So the fog was going up very quickly, and then at the very out of nowhere, almost that guy just pass through yeah and then i snapped a, a picture i think i really have one or two of that one yeah it was doing on slides so it was uh, interesting the the contrast of the guy uh, slightly uh, in the between the shadow and the light and the and the and the fog and the, and the iconic mountain in the background so again one of those those pictures that you don't plan that make i think photography very uh, 
very interesting and very interesting. Yeah. 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 It looks uh, very mystical because of the fog, and then it's just like the oh, oh the 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 mountains and things like that. It's very very interesting, beautiful. You know, from uh, uh even from our by our viewers, they're saying it's beautiful. So this is a uh, yeah. I have it also in. Uh, I must say, it's, if you go back here, yeah, have it in color as well. So in color is, uh, is also very nice because <laughs> it's different because the, the face of the, the guy is a little bit orange, uh, uh, warm. The grass is really green and the white and the blue sky, yeah. So in color is also very nice, but I thought let's put it in, 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 in black and white. So this is a, this is a, a picture I really, I really like. And you see, as I said, Ricky, we are so much obsessed about lens and gears and stuff like that. I, I, I can't even remember what camera I, and lens I had there. I just, yeah. so in the end, <laughs> yeah, maybe there are some imperfections, could be maybe a bit more, a bit, a bit more yeah. uh, uh, this and that, but, but, but frankly, in the end, uh, the outcome I think is okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, this is interesting. This is a hotel in uh, in Bangkok. This is Le Meridien, uh, a French chain. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So they actually the Le Meridien, the chain, the um, they ask a very famous uh, American photographer called Ralph Gibson. Don't know if you heard of him. Mm -hmm. He's a fairly artistic guy. Yeah. And he did a lot of news, but on, not only. And they commissioned him and they say, he, this is the lobby. The architect came up with this idea of the lobby. So we need, we'd like to have a, a transparent pictures of yours printed and kind of put on, the, on, on this picture. So this is, I really like the idea, yeah. So that, that guy, Ralph Gibson, so I don't know whether he's taking these pictures in, in Bangkok or whether mm -hmm. he was from his stock, but basically they, they're pretty large and they glued it to a, in a transparent way to the, mm -hmm. uh, to the entrance of the lobby. So that makes it really interesting. So I waited yeah, for, for somebody who was one of the doormen to come by and take pictures. So I've been there many times. So every time I go to Bangkok, I stay in this hotel. So if you want to take the same picture, very easy. Next time you go to Bangkok, stay in Le Meridien in Bangkok near Pat Pong and so on. And you see also very famous, although I can't remember, sorry for the Thai friends here, the dog outside is a, is a, is a, is a Thai artist, uh, also very well known apparently, I forgot his name, and that is at the entrance of the thing. So, but very iconic uh, lobby of hotel, I thought very well done very different from what you can see in other parts of the world. And definitely for me had a striking uh, impact, yeah? And some pictures of uh, Ralph Gibson, the artist who did this picture, uh, is, uh, is also uh, in a uh, in, uh, in, in couple of places in the, in the, in the hotel. So very, uh, very interesting. And it's still there, it's still there. Wow, after so many years. After like so many years, years actually, yeah, yeah. I think it was, it's four years, but I think the picture, I think was commissioned in 20, 10 or 29, wow. 2009 or 2010. So it's been there for a long, long time, yeah? Yeah. And um, so very interesting. Then you have the breakfast area, which is upstairs, but the, the ceiling is very high. So actually when you see it and you watch, you can see down, down what. So I have many pictures of that, that lobby. Uh, this is one of these uh, because it really fascinates me. I thought it works really well. And in the morning, the light is very strong. So it lights up from the outside like this, so you can really see well the uh, the, the 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 silhouette and the, the yeah, silhouette. it's a it's like a light box, right? You know, looking through yeah, exactly. a negative or, or slide. Like this light box. is exactly what it is, but many times bigger in size. You know, so it, it really captivate people's uh, attention if you just. Even you can't the first time it. you, you visit there, it. yeah, you can't miss it. You know, it's very good. I think it's a very interesting idea. You know, maybe this this is something I need to do for the the huge glass panel I have in my room. <laughs> you know, these <laughs> so hotel lobbies—they're all the same. Yeah, Ricky, they are pretty boring. Yeah, they have nice yes. flowers and stuff. All right, yeah. So then you have uh, the doors and the revolving door and yeah. So I thought here was a very nice touch. Yeah, and, uh, a nice change of a standard. Uh, nice, nice change. Exactly, look, yeah, correct, yeah. Correct, yeah. Uh, 
this is also a very uh, uh, interesting picture I really like. It I took uh, just a, a little bit less than a year after we arrived in Singapore, went on a trip. Um, we're looking for actually a, a, a homestay. To, and we found actually, uh, my wife found a, a place in, uh, in Sarawak, in Borneo, in, in a very remote community called Telok Melano, which is at the western tip of Borneo, near the Indonesian border. It's still Malaysia, but it's near the Indonesian border. There's the middle of nowhere. There's the, kind of this community, Telok Melano. And uh, there's only one thing, there's this pier where you arrive. And then, uh, and then there's a beautiful national park next to it. You can go by boat and that's pretty much it. And they, they grow, they grow, uh, they grow uh, uh, rubber trees, they grow... Uh, uh, Palm trees? Uh, sorry, uh, how do you call this? Uh, coffee, they grow uh, uh, pepper as well. So different kind of... Uh, Mm. spices but also different kind of uh, ingredients so these guys was just watching some kids playing football here on the on the beach uh, and uh, so I, I had a quite a wide open lens here so uh, it made a, for a nice uh, a nice uh, nice picture this is a picture i have also in my uh, in my in my bedroom in a very large uh, large format so i thought it would be uh, would be good to put in uh, in the boot so it's a widespread on the book is like 45 centimeters by by 30, so quite uh, quite nice. So this is one of those pictures that really deserves to be to be very uh, pretty, very, uh, very yeah. large. Yeah. It's what it's amazing, right? How sometimes you look at a certain photo, it bring brings back really good memories of the location. And when we talk about it, you can still you know give a lot of details about the place and things like that. It's amazing. Yeah. Just and interesting is that so, yeah. uh, since I published this picture, I usually uh, I mentioned the. Sometimes some people do reach out. Yeah, say, oh, I saw your picture. I want to go there to this homestay. Is it really a homestay? <laughs> yeah, 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 it's a homestay, but very basic. Trust me. No All right, hotel. Yeah. No, yeah. So very. So don't, yeah, no don't, bread. Don't, yeah, no. Don't expect. Don't expect a luxury vacation because it's definitely you're not going for this anyway. But uh, but uh, that's the. This is what people uh, uh, live with and. Uh, and uh, they seem to be pretty, uh, pretty, pretty content here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And this is the, um, this is one of the, uh, this is the cover actually of the book. Uh, that was taken in, in one try in the mid, uh, in the mid nineties. I moved to, uh, to Hong Kong in, uh, in 95. So, and frankly, I don't remember whether I took this picture in 95 or 96. Or, or 97, uh, I, I, I forgot it was around the mid, the, the mid, the, the mid 90s. So I would say it's very typical of uh, Hong Kong Street. You can you can see the double decker bus, the the tramway, yep. the busy street, the neon light. So very again late afternoon, and uh, and slight. This is, I think the look and feel is very nice, and this is something I've I've tried, yeah, Ricky, to to find in digital, yeah, which is. A little bit hard to be to be yeah. frank because yes. it's too sharp or too something the contrast you get with slides i must say even scanned is somewhat different so i don't know whether it's nostalgia or whether it's uh, memories that my memories that are are, are, are changing but i there is a look and feel i must say in slides and feel that i i, I don't think we'll we'll get back into uh, into digital, despite all the filters and the, this and that. Yeah, but, because uh, okay, the, the, the opinion. Yeah, I mean, I shoot slides before, and it's one of I, I would say, depending on the, the 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 type of slides you shoot, is sometimes kind of difficult to shoot certain slides, you know, because slides usually is available like ISO fifty, you know, the modern right. term like ASA fifty back then, uh, or hundred. So, you know, it's not for low light, it's for scenes like these, you've got strong, bright light, and if you can get mm. a, a nice exposure shot, it's very beautiful to look at. You know, when you look at the slides on the light box, oh my God, that's a, you, you, it's a feeling that is hard to explain. You know, you feel like, oh, I achieved something. But with digital, it's like, okay, let's stand here, take 10 photos, not very good. Okay, uh, let's go back and... Uh, spin up 
uh, Photoshop and uh, see what I can do with the photo, you know. But back I mean, look, then, with, I mean, with uh, film, it's different, yeah. yeah. Look, I like, I like digital photography and especially, I mean, the, the, the photograph you can take now with a phone or any camera, I mean, technically are superior to this, yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. I mean, you can't beat it. I mean, it's quite amazing. I mean, I'm happy for people that finally <laughs> they, they can get the, the pictures that they like because I remember back in these days, people would, uh, I remember the statistics because my brother was working in that field for a while. He was telling me the, the statistics in France Mm -hmm. People were shooting a roll of film on average per year. Can you imagine? Wow. I'm not surprised. Given so probably this day and half, age, yeah. Half for Christmas or New Year and the other half for maybe a birthday or another occasion, right? Yeah. But now you but, can see people are just shooting right, left and center. Are they looking at it more? I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not certain. I'm not I, certain. I don't know because there's a resurrection of uh, film shooters nowadays because if you look at the resale market, a second-hand film camera, red, uh, regardless of the brand, mm. they, they are pricier right now. And, you know, despite having issues finding shops to develop the film, uh, mm. people are still buying, you know. So some, some yeah. people say, oh, the hipsters are, are back, you know, the price are mm. up, and, and they, they are amazed by the, 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 the result of the photo when they shoot and develop and print. You know? Yeah, and even some uh, some cinematographers. If you like, uh, I forgot the name of the of the director of Dunkirk, the movie, right? The mm -hmm. uh, I think it was shot on film. Tarantino, I think his last one or two movies was shot on film as well. So they they find some unique kind of uh, characteristic, and definitely is not uh, is not aligned in terms of speed and efficiency that you probably get with with digital. But again these guys are looking for a certain look and feel that they find in, in, in film that they don't get somewhere else. So, so be it. <laughs> yeah. And that's so good if you to go, have a choice. Yeah. If you go to Codex website, you can find a list of any movies that use their film uh, uh, oh, really? by the director. Yes, you can. There, there, go to Google and Google uh, films that use in movie, Codex or something else. Uh, they have a database so you can look through what are the recent movies that were shot on film and by which director and things like that. So it's interesting. Because some directors, they still like the feel of a film. Maybe they started with it, they still like it and, and they like the workflow with it. You know? Some, they prefer digital because they are looking for special effect or, or they probably are sponsor and things like that. So there are many reasons behind it. But I find if you look at a movie that is shot on film, you can identify the difference. You know, when you look at it, wow, it's beautiful and things like that. So, I think what is great really is that is to have the choice, yeah, not to be imposed anything. And I think these days, yeah, you have uh, you have the choice. And I agree with you. There is definitely a re resurrection of uh, of film uh, now. When you shoot digital, going. I have, I'm shooting film as well from time to time. It's a, it's a very different experience here. But what is interesting as well is the, uh, the reaction of people on the streets. Because yep. a, few, a few times I had my, uh, last time I was in Malacca, at the, in Malaysia, I had my uh, film camera. And people know you can't immediately upload it on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, right? Or send it to a yeah. friend. The, the reaction, the, the intimacy was very different with the, with the yeah. people because yeah. they were really a lot more relaxed, I would say, because they thought, okay, fine. Yeah, anyway. Yes. <laughs> and, and, it, some, and sometimes it, it so it's going to take weeks. <laughs> sometimes it becomes a discussion because maybe they are into photography, you know, or cameras. They, they look at it and say, wow, I like your camera. And then that's how conversation go, grows from there. And, you know, then you realize you have a fellow friend who you just met mm. <laughs> is into this. So, so, yeah, I mean, previously I still get some people who come to, uh, to me when I'm shooting film on the street. Uh, it's, straight out, it's easier to strike out a conversation, you know? It's, That's right. Because yeah. you know that people who back, uh, shoot in film, they, 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 like what you say, not going to upload immediately when they get home, you know? Mm. It might not even, even see the day of 
uh, like on internet and all, you know, it could be sitting in a box waiting to be developed because I myself, I still have like 10 rows that I have yet to send it for development. So, oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. But uh, one thing I like about Flirm is that there's a surprise element to it. So sometimes you can develop it one week later and then you look back, where did I took this shot? When did I took this shot? And, you know, and things like that. So there are a lot of questions. Uh, when you look at uh, you know, the films that after the development. And this is inter- yeah, exactly what is it, the excitement. I remember when I went on, on road trip or in the 90s in China or in Tibet or stuff, I was like shooting maybe 15, 20 roles. Yeah? Can you go back? Yeah. yeah. Oh, let me, sh- let me check. Yeah. yeah. I was maybe shooting. 15, and I remember the excitement I had to, uh, because when you shoot film, obviously, you have a perception of what you've shot, only a perception, an emotion, yep. right? And then mm-hmm. the emotion was like uh, very high when I was receiving the film. Sometimes it was high, sometimes it was a bit low. Yeah, <laughs> right. It was not exactly what I wanted, but but was really for me, the excitement was to look at the, at, at the video. In digital, it's still the same a little bit because while you can still look at the back of your, of your phone or, or your camera, it's still not the same as looking on the big screen, yeah? But still, yes. uh, I remember the excitement was like incomparable. And I, I, it was interesting when I started shooting film again a couple of years ago, uh, I found back again this excitement of, 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 of looking at the, at the film or the slides. It's, yep. it's quite unique, yeah. Okay. And then maybe the, the last one is just the back cover. This is a, yeah. Uh, this is, was taken last year in, uh, in Saint-Malo in France. I don't know if you know Saint-Malo. This is a in uh, Normandy or Bretagne, excuse me. I don't, I can't remember. I think it's, I think it's Bretagne, yeah. And actually it's a, it's, a, it's a city fortress by the sea. You can see all these logs here. They're like, they're really old and they've been here for two or three centuries maybe. And they actually, they protect on high tide the, uh, the city from big waves and storms. Oh, okay. And they're made of wood. And they are really planted uh, very deep in the in the in the in the ground, and this is quite amazing because obviously this is very windy, this is very salty. Yeah? So this is one of the here you have a you can see the jogger is very small. Yeah? <laughs> the poles yeah. are maybe three or four meter high, and you, you see this lonely jogger just going by. Yeah, very uh, very beautiful uh, beautiful place. So if you haven't been to Saint Malo in France. Is not far from another very well-known uh, place called Le Mont Saint Michel, which is very well known. You know, this is this uh, this uh, big church on the top of a, a rock, isolated rock. Uh, there's the the city of Saint Malo, which is an hour, which I really highly recommend you visit. So that's basically uh, what I wanted to share, yeah, Ricky, in terms yeah. of the genesis of the book, some of the of the pictures. I, I wonder whether if there are any questions. Happy to take any. Oh, there are some comments like Fun was saying that you know, grain is a beautiful noise. Uh, I agree because nowadays, you know, if you look at um, uh, Instagram and or photo editing app, they always have this, oh, add grain, flum grain and things like that. And back then, when you shoot flum, you look at the flum, the grain is part of the image. But nowadays, people who shoot digital is that I'm so afraid of uh, the, the so-called the noise, the high ISO noise, because it doesn't make my picture look perfect. But I, I, I don't know, with, the, with new technology, you know, especially the modern cameras, shooting high ISO is not an issue in most, most scenarios because technology has evolved. And, but despite the kind of technology available, there are people who still add grain digital photos in the end right i mean whatever you use yeah the outcome is the what is important i mean you look at what people were doing in the in the dark room yeah yeah by masking and stuff i mean it's basically the same thing that you do now in photoshop i think was a lot more difficult back then yes definitely yeah Uh, a lot more difficult had required a lot of uh, a lot of trades and, and skills and experience but um in the end, the outcome comes, right? The outcome is the only outcome yep. come. How you, how you went there, yeah. For, like well, to me, photography is very... It doesn't really matter. And uh, it's funny because I think back then the printers were, were really the, the, the masters. It's, it's funny yeah. because uh, 
when I met the a printer in Paris, he was saying he printed for Cartier Bresson and uh, all these guys. And between them, they say, oh, 80% of the picture is the printer. 20% is the photographer. <laughs> He is, yeah, because back then. But, I, but in public, they say, oh, okay, it's 50 50. <laughs> <laughs> well, trick no, secret. Actually, it's quite admirable to actually be able consistently to do the same. And, and the, this, uh, this printer was saying, uh, you should have seen the, uh, the negatives of uh, Cartier Bresson, Caudel, Car, these guys. It's overexposed or underexposed, not sharp, was uh, really to work with these uh, negatives was really, was really hard, yeah. So yeah. uh, the the thing is, you know, back then we have to we have to be very mindful that back then technology is, is, isn't there. So everything that people has taken using the camera during that, that era, uh, is is mainly trial and error, right? Because you know you might not have what we have right now a proper light meter. Uh, higher uh, uh, PSA flume and things like that. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. It also uh, partly uh, depending on the skill of the printer, right? Because they are the one who get it nicely exposed and things like that. But I think all these guys have one thing in common be beside the talent. They were curious, yeah? For yeah. sure. If you look yeah, at any is. of these photographers, whether they are war photographers, they were street photographers, they were curious to, to, to show, to explore the world and bring back uh, uh, their, their, their experience and show it to the, the rest of the world. So I think that was really the power of, uh, of photography. And I have, a, um, I have a, a, I've been subscribing to National Geographic for what, 20 years now. And uh, I remember they, they reprinted some of the, one of the early explorer in the, uh, of, of Tibet was uh, Joseph Rock uh, in, went to Yunnan as well. It was amazing actually, because at that time was in 1910 or 1915, was a glass plate, yeah. And, and people are looking for these photographs because yeah, yeah. not and many people glass take- plates, Glass yeah, plates, right. carried on mules <laughs> and they yeah. would break because it's glass. So uh, guys had, these guys are really, uh, were very determined and very, uh, very uh, motivated to 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 bring something uh, relevant yeah to carry so much gear and stuff like that anyway we have a question moving on so the question from uh fun is that how long does it take you to decide to do this book and is there any plan to do another book after this one well i no. there's currently no no plan so uh uh it took me actually when i decided to do the book it i think in in two weeks it was done yeah Wow, I think the hardest, nice. <laughs> the, yeah, the hardest part is not to do the book. The book is pretty easy. The, the hardest part is to select the pictures. Yeah. So I had the first selection, then I change it and all the rest, yeah. And now, as I said, I'm going to do an exhibition in, uh, in, uh, in, Czech, uh, in Czech Republic with my friend. So we selected nine pictures from, uh, from the book, which are the nine I, I just showed you there. And then uh, they, will be, uh, they will be printed in large format and, uh, and displayed, yeah. So, uh, and with the, with the book. So yeah, no plans. What I'm doing now is uh, I'm doing a, a few series. And uh, I've, I don't know if you look at my website, you go to my website, mini series there, it's food, bicycles, trains and tramways. What I've done, actually I've done exactly the same thing I had with the book. Initially mm -hmm. there were like 200 or 300 pictures. So I cut it everything to 20. Okay. Be because it's I not easy. It's not easy, but yeah. you know the thing is that people are, are so overwhelmed with this information with images that anyway, I don't think people have these days the time or the patience to look at 300 pictures carefully. But yeah. 20 is kind of on one page. And uh, I think uh, it forces me to really uh, uh, bring consistency because I think when you do a, a series, you need to have some form of consistency, right? Between the images. Yes. Yep. So it's hard to explain what that means, this consistency, but it's kind of, there needs to be some kind of um, standalone. Of course, this is why this book was, was interesting the, until the end of 2017 was like kind of a, a big, uh, yeah, it was like 400 pictures. So if you look at it, there's no theme yet. It's a bit of everything. Standalone, I, I really like all these pictures and that was, that's the reason why I did them. But, but frankly, I believe 
it's probably better to do to say a few and maybe around the theme so uh, uh, to answer the final question yeah maybe i'll do another one but uh, will be uh, again uh, on a, on a theme and very few pictures 20 30 maximum yeah and all these photos is self created by yourself and yeah all of them yeah all of them yep. yeah yes. yeah 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 and also just to remind everybody is that your series on uh, west papua is featured on asian geographic right yeah that's right yeah so they yeah. Uh, they uh, since i had the occasion uh, thanks to you uh, um to uh, to actually present the uh, the the this uh, this trip i did in uh, in november 2016 the yep. editor was there and then they i, I got in touch with them and they, they decided to run a, a story on uh, asian geographic which is uh, was uh, in print in the magazine so very uh, very interesting yeah yeah, it's good. Yeah, for the collaboration in the in the future. Let's anyway, hope so there's more coming up uh, in the magazine with for you. We'll see once this uh, once this uh, crisis is over. <laughs> yeah, because now obviously not everybody is going out. Not many people are interested in buying magazines and stuff like that. So, so we'll see. Well, the thing is, some of the stores are not open, so they can't be out there buying the magazines. You know because mm -hmm. of the restriction essential or mm -hmm. not essential that's the challenge you know mm -hmm. it's like we take it for granted a lot of things we can buy easily previously and uh you know i i, I was uh trying to buy a can opener the other day and i know i realized <laughs> some shops don't have can opener because i bought a can of milk and i want to open it but i I realized the can opener that I had previously, you know, was too rusty, so I threw it away. And I was asking myself, where can I buy one? <laughs> and it's not every place, except unless you go to a supermarket that carries a lot of these essential items, then you, else you I can't see. find it easily, right? I see. Yeah. Good. All right. It's good. So it's that's... good that uh, that you share with us the process of selection uh, selecting your photos the process of how you uh, lay, do the layout in in lightroom using lightroom and then how you send it for printing and how people can order yeah so for, vi for viewers a, yeah. who are interested to get a book the link is up there uh, in the facebook uh, video and i'll post it again uh, in, the, in the facebook feed uh, go to the link order his book you know support a fellow uh, photographer maybe you find something interesting and if things are over you can uh, meet up with him and he will sign the book <laughs> that you bought and if you guys have any uh, any questions on the i mean while i'm not an expert i've been using lightroom for for a good 10 years i would say so uh, i know i know it so i think one of the challenge with digital now is like is we are taking so many pictures such a sheer amount that i think is important so Happy to share with you how I catalog and uh, I, uh, I register my uh, my image to find them pretty easily. Um, and uh, we can have another session on this if you like, Ricky, or people if they're interested. And then the book, happy to uh, to show you more in details on how to do it. But frankly, I would really encourage to uh, to do some selection of pictures. I think that's the first part. And then if you like, you can go down and do a book or publish them online. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it will be good. Uh, you know? viewers who tune in today learn something you know maybe you can apply it over this period because you get more time at home it's a good time to That's select right. the photos you know and get it mm -hmm. uh, printed you know especially for parents who have a lot of kids you can start building a yearly book you know i know some friends they do that on a yearly basis That's right. i, I think it's good yeah you know it's good memories we, because we used to print out photos right alan when you send the film for development you say okay let's print the 36 and this thing in one century you know it's going to be here maybe maybe yeah. a bit uh, but what's on my hard disk to be frank i'm not so sure <laughs> yeah it's true it's true you know so, digital media to, for storage is you know you only have so many years it's, it's not easy to, to to keep them going for you know 50 it goes 100 very years quickly because i have like a kind of almost 250,000 pictures right photographs yeah yeah Maybe a bit less, yeah. Actually, individual, maybe two hundred thousand. So it goes very quickly, right? Yep. And um, but uh, 
if you're if you're interested and passionate about it, I think uh, it's time uh, well uh, well spent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if Good. you if any one of you watching right now have any questions, reach out to Alan. You no, know, his Instagram handle is there. You know, reach out to him. Drop him a message. Follow him. You know, you can see a lot of image. I see him posting. You know, on a regular basis, a lot of times. Nice almost photos. every day, yeah. Post yeah, just just follow him, day. you know, and he will follow you back for sure. You know, keep it coming, keep your question coming, approach him, you know, and uh, to to everybody, stay safe. Thank you for tuning in. We we will have more program next week. Uh, I will post it next couple of days. We have uh, uh many talks over the next couple of weeks. You know, in fact, one every Saturday per week and things Excellent. like that. Yeah. Thanks for here again. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Th thank you. Take care. Thank you, guys. Bye -bye. Uh, yeah. Thank you. This session is brought to you by Photosphere. Photosphere is the official distributor for brands like Leo Photo, HNY, Haida, and many more. Do visit photosphere.sg.com for more details.